start with just talking about um, your give back uh, sort of methodology because there's, there's, as I didn't even read them off here, but you're involved with a number of different charitable organizations. And tell me what you're passionate about in that regard and, and why you spend so much time doing it. Uh, you know, as, as I've gotten older, um, so many lessons, so many lessons I've learned the hard way. And you know, for many years, we were able to build our brand beneath the radar. And as a private person owning a private company, that really suited me fine. Um, Forbes and others in the media they changed out of that. our brand. <laughs> and, <laughs> they changed that. Uh, they changed it. And it forced me to step out of my shy and, and selfish shell and connect with others and recognizing that what a blessing it is to be exposed to needs that are so much bigger than us and to opportunities that are so much bigger than us. And when we recognize the needs and the opportunities out there, we realize that comfort is absolutely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. And our team, we had the privilege of working with the UN with their youth program. Uh, the, the Millennium Development Goals, everything from eradicating hunger, disease, poverty, supporting education, uh, environmental sustainability. Uh, our company has added two more initiatives, and that is supporting uh, our military and their families, and also the fight against human trafficking. Um, human trafficking is the fastest growing illegal business on earth, unlike drugs. Human beings can be sold over and over and over again. And for all of us who work in manufacturing and retail, it's critical to recognize that tragically when human beings are no longer profitable in the sex slave trade, they're often sold into forced labor. Uh, surprise factory inspections, that's how we began our brand um, with a single pair of socks 26 years ago. It's something that we continue today but just for all of us to be alert. And so to answer your question, something that makes it exciting for us today, and even though we're 26 years old as a brand, we feel like we're a baby brand just getting started. There's so much to do. But our getting to know you process, our vetting process, when we're considering a new partner, we share that list of goals. And it's so interesting to, to see the response. Usually, uh, the, the company will be already involved in one of these initiatives or they'll be interested. And we don't dictate a monetary amount, it can be a volunteer day, but just something so that we know that in success, we are moving forward in a tangible way. The vision for our company is teach, inspire, empower, make our world better. So in success, we can truly make a difference. Once in a while, we'll get somebody who looks at the list and they'll say, no, we're not interested in anything here. And that lets us know not to waste each other's time and right. that we're not going to be a good fit. But uh, many organizations that, um, that our company vets and encourages others to support as well. Let's talk about the business, um, the Kathy Ireland worldwide wide business. Talk about the products that you make. Talk about your, your partners, your retail partners who you sell to, and just give us a sense about your business. Thank you. Well, we, we started in 93 with a single pair of socks. Uh, Why socks uh, after you being on the cover of all these fashion uh, no. magazines and swimsuit, <laughs> you know, uh, edition of Sports Illustrated, uh, did, did something uh, I just couldn't imagine you being actually wearing socks. Well, you're very kind. <laughs> you're very kind, Terry. The, the publications I worked for were amazing. I was okay, and at this point in my life, um, <laughs> I was an aging pregnant model at my kitchen table. And to tell the truth, I was actually offered the opportunity to model this pair of socks, and it's not quite as glamorous as it sounds. It was a little budget, uh, no exotic location, no photo retouch. We didn't know if they were gonna use my face. It might've just been, you know, crop and get the, get the feet. But it was a job, and it was at a time when not a lot of job offers were coming my way. The entire time I worked as a model, it, it wasn't my plan. Grateful it ended up being a great education. Thought maybe I could save money for college or to start a business. Tried and failed many businesses along the way. Had one of those businesses taken off, the modeling career wouldn't have gone on as long. I felt like if I didn't shut the door on that chapter of my life, I might not live my dream 
of design and business. Loved the people. John and Marilyn Moretz from Hickory, North Carolina. They just good people. And so we began the process. Uh, John Carrasco, who's here with us, our genius global creative director, um, after family-based focus groups, really you know, loving the, these socks. And I love what Jill said about diversity. We have a wonderfully diverse team. When I worked as a model, people said, you're so cheap. You know, Why don't you buy better clothes, drive a better car, this and that. I prefer to think of it as being fiscally frugal, and I was investing in people, putting a team together, people with different gifts who would become our, uh, our marketing officer, our creative director, just all these different gifts that I was not strong at, different perspectives, but when it comes to what's really important, we're all on the same page. So surprise factory inspections, what's going on behind the scenes, how are people being treated at every level, and, and we love these people. So we started with, with a pair of socks. Some said it was um, counterintuitive. Some said it was stupid. They said, you can't, you can't start a brand with a pair of socks. You should start with swim because of modeling. But that would have been too obvious. And I felt that we, we wanted to build a real brand, something that was not dependent on any little smidgen of celebrity I might have had in the last century, but a real solid brand. And, that's why it's a lowercase k, lowercase i intentionally, not about me, it's about our customer. Um, John and I, we, we loaded our backpacks, hit the road, presented our socks to retailers, doors slammed in our faces, and we heard everything from, you know, we love the socks, but, but who needs you? Can't start a brand with a pair of socks. Uh, in the early days, uh, we, we slept in airports sometimes to save money, and sometimes people think that's a big deal, and it's not. And to, to you know, particularly to the young people out there, I encourage you, whatever material thing you have to give up to live your dream, it's not a sacrifice, it's a bold investment, and that bold investment made it possible for us to sell our 100 millionth pair of socks. <laughs> You hear that? 100 million. <laughs> That's just the sock business. Uh, tell us about the other products that are uh, in the Cathy Ireland worldwide assortment. Um, apparel, fashion, handbags, uh, jewelry, uh, diamonds by Cathy Ireland are uh, two to ten thousand dollars. Uh, patented setting, and then our estate pieces, Kathleen Marie, Paul Raps, New York. Again, just incredible people that I have the privilege of working with. Um, pet products, I uh, was talking with JK. <laughs> we love PetSmart, but just wonderful designs, the home industry. Um, and, and we work at, at various channels of distribution. Uh, weddings. Our company has design studios and estates throughout the world, Fiji, Greece, Hawaii, where we produce weddings. We've been quietly doing this for decades. We learn so much uh, about our customer on this most critical day. If we can earn that trust, then perhaps they'll trust us as they're nesting and, and purchasing furniture for their home. FinTech, uh, an area that um, is critically important to me. Insurance. Um, we work with some extraordinary people and really leveling the playing field. I think for so many years we didn't see women in this area and people I think oftentimes try to put women in boxes and just, you know, we, we don't fit in boxes. We're too odd shaped for that. Uh, working in, in the entertainment industry with some extraordinary people Education, that's a, a passion of mine as well, and educational toys and children. Um, it, it, wonderful, wonderful products and companies and people who were wonderfully diverse, but again, when it comes to what's really important, this, this group, they honor that vision of teach, inspire, empower, make our world better, and uh, just working with with great quality products and services. Do you do you worry with all of the uh, the the, the uh, categories that you're involved with and that you've just described? You worry about um, the Kathy Ireland brand being too spread out. I mean, for you to keep control over mm -hmm. all of the, the 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 all of the things you must keep control of to keep your brand intact. I yes, and I think one of my biggest mistakes early on was that fear and allowing that fear to stop me. Mm -hmm. and, but I felt like 
I don't want to grow too quickly, and I don't. I never want to. Uh, I never want to re react too quickly. We've got to do that getting to know you process. But that fear kept me from growing because I felt like, particularly with, you know, we, we were speaking yesterday about, um, I, I was sharing with you, my, my dad worked for labor relations Union, and yeah. with Cesar Chavez and uh, how people are treated has always been at the forefront of my mind. We have the toughest human rights clause that I'm aware of and I always share with people, if you know something stronger, better, we need it. Please share it with us. So there were some who said, you know, you've got to stop talking about this. You've got to stop talking about uh, human trafficking and, and all the rest because there will be situations, there'll be a subcontracting situation. People will break your rules, your laws. And uh, we work with manufacturers uh, domestically and abroad. And, you know, they, they, something will happen. And my response to that is that's why I, I was slow to, to grow for so long. What I recognize is if we stay small, and somebody breaks our, our contract and they do something, even if it's fine in, in a different country, but it's not okay with us, right, right. they can dismiss us. They can say, well, you know, fine. You know, we, we've got other people that we're working with. But if we have some leverage in growth and in success, we have an opportunity to initiate positive change. So that motivates our team to grow and to grow well, and to wh whatever reason, if there, there is um, an incident like that, whatever someone's motive might be, uh, we, our, my response is thank you. Mm -hmm. If you can help shine a light on something that's going on that needs to change, we're grateful for that information.